Good afternoon, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed afternoon update for February 6, 2025 on the intense rainfall depression that's funneling ashore rainfall storms and flooding across far north Queensland and has been doing so for the last week. It's not over yet with more intense rainfall on the way over the coming couple of days. We're going to be talking about all things forecast, timing and locations of this intense rainfall. And we'll also touch on the flooding situation as well. All of that plus more coming up into this afternoon's forecast update. Let's just get stuck straight into things right now. With a look at the satellite imagery, you can you can see there have been some good thunderstorms over the last six hours bubbling up around the Townsville area. Offshore from the North Queensland coastline, there's been plenty of rainfall funneled ashore as well. In fact, to the 24 hours to 9 a.m., uh, yesterday, Hamilton Island picked up a whopping 330 millimetres, which gives you an idea of the intense falls that are being reported. Now, this is different from last week's rainfall event in the sense that there's more sort of heavy uh, showers, so the rainfall is a little bit more isolated. Significant rainfall observations have also been reported around Townsville overnight after an overnight deluge left 150 millimetres in some of the rain gauges, averaging 50 to 120 millimetres over the course of, over the areas around Townsville, and has caused major flooding again overnight in both the Bowley and the Ross Rivers, especially at Alpens Weir, which uh, as I posted yesterday on the Facebook, there was plenty of water flowing over there and there's even more flowing over there this morning. So some really significant flooding has taken place once again. And with more rainfall on the cards, I mean, you can see or with the radar imagery overlaid here, that there is plenty of rainfall still in the, in the vicinity of these showers and storms here. It is now moving a little bit further out to sea, but yeah, the rainfall is still very much around across North Queensland. You can't really see it on this imagery here, but there is still plenty of rainfall around and it is heavy at times as well as a result of these thunderstorms. With more developing uh, every hour as well, we're expecting another round of rainfall to develop over the coming couple of hours. So later on today we're expecting these showers to steadily ease off. We're not expecting too much in the way of significant rainfall tonight, at least along the uh, North Queensland coastline between uh, Cardwell up towards Cairns. Uh, further down south between Air down through Bowen, the Whit Sundays, Hamilton Island and then down towards Mackay we're expecting a little bit of rainfall later on this afternoon and evening as well with isolated heavy falls around the Whit Sundays and Proserpine later tonight and into very early tomorrow morning. There'll be moderate to heavy falls here and there around Townsville as well, extending north up towards Ingham and Cardwell, but nothing significant. And we shouldn't be looking at triple figure rainfall accumulations around the Townsville area. But I do fear tomorrow we're going to be seeing some minor, moderate, or even major flooding in the Proserpine and the Pioneer Rivers, just because there is plenty of rainfall coming in tonight. If I had to put a number on it, the maximum rainfall accumulations that I forecast as being possible tonight would be up to 180 millimetres, just from intense falls, with a lot of locations expected to pick up between 30 and 80 millimetres. And again, swathes of uh, land around the Crosspine area should pick up closer to the 120 millimeter mark and like I said isolated totals up to 180 millimeters. The rainfall over the next couple of days is going to be more unpredictable than the rainfall that we have just seen just because it is going to be coming in in the form of showers so there'll be places that miss out and then places that get an absolute boatload of rainfall and it's, it's a kind of a bit of a game of whack-a-mole really just to see what rainfall is going to fall in what locations. It is a very difficult forecast however the principles do remain the same. Later on tomorrow afternoon, Friday night, we're going to be seeing showers and thunderstorms develop along a trough line that's going to strengthen between Mount Isa uh, along to the North Queensland coastline around Cairns and Cardwell, with heavy falls expected along the Casbury coast south of Cairns, intense rainfall actually expected around the Tully and the Innisfail area, and we could be seeing rainfall rates there, averaging 30 to 60 millimetres an hour sustained for the entirety of Friday evening and into Saturday, and even in, out towards Sunday morning as well, we'd be seeing plenty of rainfall uh, up there with six hourly rainfall accumulations up to 200 millimetres not being ruled out for Friday. Friday night alone. Heavy rainfall will then develop along the coastline uh, late Friday night and into early Saturday morning for locations between Cardwell down towards Townsville with six hourly rainfall accumulations up to uh, 150 millimetres expected between Cardwell down towards Townsville which will cause some significant flooding in the Ingham and the Halifax area in already devastated areas by flooding and then along the Harvey Range which runs parallel to the Queensland coastline between Townsville up towards Ingham. Significant falls also expected through Friday mo uh, evening and into Saturday morning as well. The rainfall will temporarily ease off Saturday morning but it will build once again Saturday evening with convective thunderstorms expected along the Atherton Tablelands and then along to the coastline as well along the Casbury Coast with significant falls also possible along the coastline with that low pressure system moves itself offshore and will be getting plenty of showers funneled into the Air Guru and the Townsville area in fact plenty of rainfall expected Saturday afternoon and evening around Townsville and Air and especially for locations further inland like I said into the mountains and even as far inland as Georgetown and for south we could be seeing rainfall accumulations there over the course of a six hour period up to 100 millimeters with 24 hour accumulations average 
averaging 200 to 300 millimeters across some of the wetter locations along the coastline, and then about 100 to 200 millimeters as you get further inland. Plenty of rainfall to go around is what I'm saying here. The showers will continue through Saturday night. They'll get heavy once again late Saturday night into early Sunday morning as the final of one of these low pressure systems heads itself offshore. We'll be seeing some intense falls Sunday morning and into very early Sunday afternoon for locations between Cardwell down towards Townsville. Once again, it looks like Ingham and those in the Herbert River our basin will be getting plenty of heavy rainfall. Once again, we could be seeing falls in the six hour periods of between 100 and 150 millimeters and 24 hour accumulations up to 250 millimeters there. So again, the falls between Friday, Saturday and Sunday morning will very quickly begin to add up there. And then Sunday evening, heavy falls also expected to continue there. Moderate to heavy rainfall will continue here and there, especially along the Casper Coast, where it will be heavy at times from the low pressure system and the trough moving offshore Monday night. And then the rainfall will begin to ease off for good by about lunchtime on Tuesday. And then as this low pressure system pulls away from the Queensland coastline on Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. The rain should clear for a sunny start to Wednesday morning for the first time in quite a few days. In fact, for the first time in probably two weeks up in far north Queensland, it looks like some proper sunshine will be shining through Wednesday morning and into Wednesday afternoon. Of course, a few showers still lingering here throughout the remainder of the week, but it does look promising at this time that we're going to be seeing a bit of sunshine begin to materialise across north Queensland. Very exciting stuff, and it'll be very good to see some of those river levels and those inland seas that have begun to open up uh, begin to dry out just a little bit. So the bulk of the rainfall, as you've probably gathered by now, is going to happen between Cardwell down towards Townsville, with a very heavy e emphasis on rainfall around the Ingham and the Paluma Dam uh, area as well, down to about Rollingston. Some very heavy falls expected in this little pocket here. We've got the chance of heavy falls as well around Proserpine and into the Whitsundays area, especially with showers that will get themselves jammed up against the coastline there. We'll be seeing some isolated totals there, up to 500 millimetres over the next week. And heavy falls also possible, uh, I believe it was sa uh, Saturday morning and Sunday morning, uh, between Townsville down towards Air and Guru. Heavy falls also expected along the Casper Coast as well, pretty much at all times until Monday. There is a chance of heavy falls starting Friday night uh, along the Casper Coast with a very heavy emphasis on heavy falls between Innisfail and Cardwell. That's where the heaviest of the rain is likely to be. Between Ingham down towards Townsville, uh, Innisfail rather down towards Townsville is where the majority of the rainfall is going to be falling in this pocket here along the Casper Coast. Typically Australia's wettest locations and has been the wettest location so far in 2025 where rainfall accumulations are now pushing up to 2,800 millimetres for the year and we're only, I mean, it's only about 40 days into 2025 right now. And by the time uh, this rainfall event will be been and gone, we'll be looking at three to 3.2 meters of rainfall having already fallen here of this part of Queensland alone uh, just so far this year. So some really significant rainfall accumulations are possible. Let's talk about those right now. No need to be wasting extra time. That's not needed to be wasted. But let's take a look at rainfall accumulations over the next four days. You can see significant falls are expected here, but the forecast models aren't doing it justice. As usual with the forecast models, they do tend to underestimate rainfall events like this, especially in this part of Queensland. The only forecast model that I find regularly does it right is the Axis, but the Axis is calling for some, basically a powerful tropical cyclone to develop around the Queensland Northern Territory border. So I'm discounting the latest forecast run from the Axis. It's just too unreliable with too many weird things going on. So we're going to use the ISMA and I'm going to give my two cents worth on every single location. So up in the, the Daintree Rainforest, not expecting too much in the way of rainfall up there. Peak falls over the next four or five days should be around 200 to 250 millimetres around Mossman with widespread spread falls between 80 and 150 millimetres being the norm up there. Rainfall will also drop off significantly as you get further inland. South of the Daintree down towards Corunda and Cairns, we're expecting falls there of around 200 to 250 millimetres. Heavier falls, the more inland you get as well. The Atherton, Tablelands, Raven, so Atherton and Mareeba are expecting about 200 to 250 millimetres as well. And some of the mountains further inland as well, Mount Surprise, Mount Carbine could also be looking at falls up to about 200 millimetres too. Further down the coastline, we're expecting Innisfail, Tully and Cardwell to all pick up 500 millimetres from this weather event here with the majority of the rainfall, like I said, coming through on Saturday and Sunday where we could be seeing, like I said, six hourly rainfall accumulation there up to 150 millimetres at the absolute wettest of times. Uh, because it is going to be coming through in showers, there will be places that pick up substantially more rainfall than other places, so there is a little bit of a discrepancy in the forecast. Uh, Innisfail, Tully and Cardwell could get anywhere between 400 out to 750 millimetres of rainfall, and that is quite a wide scope for them. 750 millimetres is what I'd class as a pretty wet period of time for Innisfail and Tully, even though we're talking about some of the wettest places in Australia. But 400 millimetres can be discounted and passed off as a pretty regular week. Either way, because it's going to 
be coming through from showers and showers will find themselves over every single location at some point over the next five days. Significant and sharp rises to the river levels in the Johnston, Tully and the Russell rivers can be expected. Cardwell, I'm seeing no less than uh, 450 or 500 millimetres falling there. Ingham as well, no less than 450 millimetres with a maximum for both locations at about 600 millimetres. I reckon Halifax will get close to a 400 millimetres. Lucinda as well, just considering it's more coastal location, probably about 400 millimetres there. Palm Island, I reckon we'll get about 400 millimetres as well. Uh, Paluma Dam, I'm expecting about six to 700 millimetres over the next five days. I reckon 700 will definitely be pushing it on the upper echelon of how much rainfall could be uh, seen there, but I do still reckon that they're going to see some pretty significant rainfall accumulations, of course, on top of the 300 millimetres that they've seen over the last couple of days, and on top of the 1500 millimetres that they've seen over the past 10 days there. Townsville, I'm expecting a further 300 millimetres there, pretty much in line with what the forecast is saying, actually. I don't really have any uh, issues with what the Eastern River forecast is suggesting for Townsville, but we could be seeing falls around the uh, Lake Ross area up to about 450, pushing even 500 millimetres there. Guru, I would not be surprised if they picked up 350 millimetres air as well, just considering it's more kind of exposed location there to the rainfall that's going to be coming th uh, through, especially on Sunday and Monday. Expecting falls there up to about 350 millimetres. Inland communities such as Charters Towers and Ravenswood up to about 250 millimetres a piece there, which will flow straight into the Burdekin River and just add to the flooding problem that they're having, especially around Charters Towers, where major flooding is already being reported. Bowen, I see about 200 millimetres coming through there. Proserpine is a little bit of wild card at this time, but certainly some of the mountains around Proserpine could be picking up up to about six or 700 millimetres of rainfall, depending on what showers come through, especially if they get another band like Hamilton Island got the other night. They could be seeing some really significant falls there, but I reckon for the most part, between 200 and 400 millimetres for Proserpine, with a chance of significantly more rainfall there. Yalbur and Garget, I'm expecting about 200 millimetres apiece there, and then further down on the coastline, probably about 80 to 100 millimetres around the Mackay area, and then further south of Serena, you're not really expecting anything in the way of significant rainfall as you get any further south there, and that's reciprocated between the forecast models as well, the GFS and the SMLF pretty much saying the same thing over the next five days in terms of rainfall accumulations and rainfall whereabouts, which is very good to see as a forecaster, that gives me great confidence in saying that the forecast that I've just given is very accurate, very reliable, and is going to play out pretty much exactly how I have just said it. Again, I would just like to say before we talk about the flooding forecast, which is a very important factor in this forecast, that this rainfall is going to be coming through in the sense that it will be coming through from showers and heavy bands of rainfall as well. So take it with a very heavy pinch of salt. There could be significantly higher rainfall accumulations in some locations, like I said, up to that 7 or 750 millimeter mark around Tully and Innisfail or Cardwell even, but there also could be significantly lower rainfall accumulations. So don't be surprised if you completely miss, on the, uh, miss out on the rainfall. Whilst that is a low chance of happening at this time, be very grateful if you miss out on the rainfall because there's a lot of places that are not going to be so lucky and unfortunately it looks like the Herbert River is once again going to be smashed and that leads us very nicely on into the flooding part of the video so we're going to head over to the um under the outdoor map here over on windy.com and have a look at what is expected in terms of what's uh, coming in for these uh, flooded rivers or already very struggling rivers. So the Russell River isn't expecting anything too crazy. I would still expect some moderate flooding in the Russell River, especially uh, coming through Sunday and towards Monday. I'm also expecting some flooding of the Johnston River as well Sunday afternoon and evening. That could get up towards major flooding with a peak expected Sunday night. Uh, the Tully River as well, I'm expecting major flooding there. I would not be surprised if that went to major flooding alerts in the next 24 hours with the rainfall that could come through later on tonight into early tomorrow morning, so we'll need to be keeping a very close eye on the Tully River. And the Herbert River is still at major flooding alerts now for Halifax, and significant flooding still ongoing throughout the Herbert River and the Herbert River Basin. So uh, considering the fact that there's another half a metre to three quarters of a metre of rainfall coming through in the Giriga National Park and significant amounts of rainfall that will flow in from the Stone River as well into the Herbert River, I'm expecting some really significant floodwaters to move through Ingham, uh, Treban, and then down towards Halifax as well and into the Herbert River uh, Delta around the Lucinda area. So again, some really significant rainfall looks to be possible there which is very unfortunate because they are starting to recover now from the rainfall that they've just had and the river levels are slowly beginning to drop uh, but agonizingly slowly and they're expecting significant contributions over the next couple of days. Uh, Crystal Creek will rage once again. Uh, Paluma Dam as well, expecting some really significant floodwaters to flow into there. Uh, expecting some significant uh, breaches of uh, riverbeds as well along the uh, Bruce Highway here. So whatever damage has been repaired, I don't really think there's been any uh, damage repaired to the Bruce Highway right now. It's still seven in multiple locations between Bamboo down towards Townsville, and I reckon that there's going to be significant damage to the uh, Bruce Highway as well from the rainfall that's going to be coming through. And then down in the Paluma Range National Park, all the water flowing off the Paluma Range National Park into... 
uh, say Blue Water Creek and the Black River through here, significant flooding is also expected of those locations as well. Uh, the Bowley River and the Ross River also expecting moderate to major flooding, especially in the Bowley River. I'm expecting major flooding at the Bowley River as well beginning tomorrow morning and significant contributions to Lake Ross as well, even though they're dumping water and they're dumping water quite aggressively right now. I'm expecting significant contributions to Lake Ross from this rainfall and some really significant rainfall as well to uh, contribute to the Ross River's flood that's expected to continue ongoing for the next couple of days. The Horton River and the Reed River as well expecting some really significant floodwaters to move through there, expecting uh, the Horton River to float major flooding alerts through Guru as well. Not likely to reach the highway or to reach the town, but still major flooding expected in the Horton River. And the Burdekin River as well, we can expect moderate to major river in flooding as well of the Burdekin, which would not surprise me as well, especially if water levels do or if the rainfall materializes over the Burdekin catchment, which is a huge catchment, by the way, but it really expecting some significant flooding as well of the Burdekin River as well, down towards Home Hill and Air. But I don't reckon the floodwaters will hit Air until probably about Sunday or Monday, depending on when the rainfall does arrive and what rainfall does come. The Proserpine and the Pioneer Rivers as well, moderate to, or minor to moderate flooding expected of both rivers. I wouldn't expect anything crazy of the Pioneer River, especially considering that that's on the drop right now, and it is rapidly dropping. But the Proserpine River, depending on what showers come through there, we could be seeing some substantial and some significant flooding of the Proserpine River. So certainly something to keep a very close eye on at this time. Plenty of rainfall inbound, plenty of storms inbound, plenty of showers inbound, and some really significant rainfall could contribute to some significant flooding across North Queensland. But yeah, you've got about 24 hours of dry weather, depending on whereabouts you are. I mean, for the Whit Sundays, it's going to be pretty wet tonight. It's going to be a pretty stormy night. But for the most part, around Townsville, up into the Casper Coast, the remainder of today is going to be relatively dry, especially compared to recent days. And you might even get a little bit of sunshine as well. So prepare now, stockpile if you need to. Uh, prepare to be cut off until about Tuesday if you live in a really remote area and prepare to lose access as well to parts of your property because there is some significant rainfall still inbound and right now it's definitely too late to evacuate for some of these locations but I don't expect water levels to rise above the previous flood records uh, that we've just had over the last couple of days so that is some good news there. Places that haven't been inundated are very unlikely to uh, receive inundation from this weather event but again we will keep a very close eye on the flooding situation but that is all for me to this afternoon on the Cyclone Source channel. I really appreciate all the support lately and thank you so much for 25,000 subscribers. That is very much appreciated, of course. A special message in the uh, community tab of the channel as well on the homepage. But that is all for me today, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.